Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we'll be covering the first three MCQ problems from the chapter of fluid mechanics. So before you watch the solution to any of the problems, do try it out for like four to five minutes at least. In that way, you guys will be clear with the solution. So with that, let's begin with problem number one. On a horizontal floor, two identical cylindrical vessels A and B are connected by a thin tube near their bottom contains some water. When an ice block of volume 100 centimeter cube is gently put inside the vessel A, it gets half submerged in water. How much mass of water will flow through the connecting tube during the process of melting of the ice cube? So an ice cube is being submerged inside water and we have to talk about how much water passes through this connecting tube in the process of melting this ice. So first of all guys, the volume of the ice cube is given to be 100 centimeter cube. And with that, we can find the mass of the ice cube. That's simply going to be the density of the ice times its volume and which comes out to be 90 grams. So now let's say we melt the 90 grams of ice into water. Okay, the volume of water obtained is let's say V. How do we determine V? So basically we can conserve mass, right? So, so V is simply going to be 90 centimeter cube. So if we melt 90 grams of ice, we get 90 centimeter cube or 90 ml of water. So reading the second sentence, that is when the ice block is pushed inside the vessel A, it gets half submerged in water, okay? This is how the situation is looking like. So we know the volume of the ice over here is 100 ml, right? So what is the volume of the water it displaces? It is equal to half of it, right? And that is 50 ml. So this volume over here, like if you look at it from the top, it will be a cubical volume and that volume will be 50 ml. And now I want you guys to imagine that this ice over here is removed, okay? So I'm just drawing the boundary of the ice over here. Basically the water is over here and there is nothing over here, okay? So this is basically a hole uh, whose volume is 50 ml. So now we have 90 ml of water in our hand and we have to fill it in basically. And also guys, uh, there is a compartment over here. Just uh, let's say for a moment we have closed it. So there is no transfer of water from here to here. So, so how are we gonna fill our 90 ml? 50 ml from the 90 ml, we can fill it in this hole, right? So 50 ml is gone. So what's left is 40 ml. So, and let's say we pour the 40 ml in. So let's say what level increases by this much. So the increase in volume above the original surface is 40 ml. So now let's bring in the other container. Okay guys, so it is container number two and the water level initially was the same in both the containers, right? The water level, initial water level, let's say it was something like this. Now let's say we open this compartment over here. So we open the compartment. So there will be transfer of fluid from container A to container B. And why is that? Because uh, there is a difference in pressure, right? As there is more fluid here, the pressure at this point over here will be greater than the pressure at this point, which basically means the fluid will be driven through the compartment and the driving of fluid will will continue till the point height of fluid in either of the containers will become equal. And that, as you can imagine, will happen when this 40 ml is split half half. So there will be 20, 20 ml over here and there will be 20 ml over here. So what is the amount of water that, that flowed through the compartment? It is equal to 20 ml, right? And as the density of water is simply one, so the 20 ml of water corresponds to 20 grams of water. And that is our answer to our first question and that is option A. Let's move on to problem two. Okay, so continuing with problem two. We have a sphere of mass m and radius r that rests at the bottom of a large reservoir. Depth of the reservoir is h. Density of the material of the sphere is same as that of the water. Now the sphere is slowly pulled completely out of water. So we have to talk about the work done by the agent that is pulling the sphere, okay? Okay guys, so this is a basic diagram of the situation. Okay guys, so it was it is given that the density of the ball is equal to the density of water. So which basically means when the sphere is completely immersed in water, the buoyancy force and the weight of the object cancels each other out, right? So therefore our agent does not have to do any work to bring this sphere from this state over here in diagram one to this state over here because the because the F agent is simply going to be zero, right? So there is no work that has to be done. But in order to go from state two to state three, which is our final state, work has to be done because as the sphere is pulled out of the surface, the submerged volume decreases and hence as a result, FB decreases. So the, now F agent has to do some work to pull the sphere out. And so the brute force approach to this problem could maybe to find this F agent uh, as a function of, let's say the submerged volume, and then we can integrate it to obtain the work. So let's do that as a first line of approach. Okay guys, so after some time, the sphere is in this configuration over here. And let's say the distance, this distance over here is X. So now in this case, what is a submerged volume? Now in order to find the submerged volume, you need to be clear with one formula and that is a volume of a spherical cap. And you can think of this structure as a pan or a tava basically. And so the volume of a spherical cap is one by three pi H squared times three R minus H. And here H is this distance over here and which we took it as X. 
Okay, so in our case, the submerged volume. So now we have the submerged volume as a function of x. So now let's draw an FBD of the sphere. So clearly the Boyne force uh, is acting in the upward direction. Then we have the weight of the sphere that is acting in the downward direction. And then we have our F agent, which is pulling this sphere out. And as this is all done in slowly, we can consider this to be an equilibrium, which means F agent equals W minus FB. Now W is mg. Now the Boyne force is the submerged volume which is one by three pi x squared times three r minus x times the density of water times g, right? Okay guys, so now what I'm gonna do is take mg common and here I'm gonna write m as the density rho, which is the same as the density of water, right? So I'm just gonna write it as rho times the volume of the sphere. That is four by three pi r cubed. Okay guys, so now we got the f agent as a function of x. And I know this is getting messy. So there is a much easier way of solving this problem, but I just wanted to show how this problem is done by using mathematics. So, okay, so now as we have f agent, now all we have to do is find the work done. And work done is simply the integral of f agent dot dx, where dx is the infinitesimal displacement in the upward direction. So the limits of x is important guys. Uh, it was in this state over here. So initially the distance x was equal to 2r, right? And finally x would come to zero so the limit should be from 2r to zero okay and after you integrate this expression you'll get the work done as mgr which matches with option a this is a lengthy way to approach this problem but now i'll tell you guys an easier way to approach this problem the density of the ball is equal to the density of the water which basically means we can just forget about the ball and just consider a spherical volume of water itself inside the water right so this is state one over here okay so what i'm doing is so i took out this volume and spread it across the surface in this fashion so and the reason why i'm doing this is because there is no change in the configuration between these two cases okay guys so now let's say uh, our agent is a wizard and he just collected m mass worth of water from this uh, top surface and just created a spherical ball out of it so the only difference from state two over here to state three is that mass m was converted into a sphere over here. So what is the change in potential energy from state two to state three? It is simply, okay, so initially the mass m was completely present on the surface of water. The center of mass of the sphere is at a height r. So the change in potential energy from state two to state three is simply mgr. And that is the work done by uh, our agent or wizard or whatever. Okay, so that was the alternate method of solving this problem. And now let's move on to question three. Okay, guys, moving on to the last problem of the day. And if you enjoyed the video, do like and subscribe. That's channel it means a lot and if you want more videos from fluid mechanics then comment on that also i'll make videos according to that so yeah let's begin with problem three so we have a slit that is cut along the right bottom edge that is over here of a rectangular tank the slit is closed by a wooden wedge of mass m and apex angle theta as shown in the figure the vertical plane surface of the wedge is in contact with the right vertical wall of the tank and there is friction over here and the friction coefficient is given to be mu to what maximum height can the water be filled in the tank without any leakage through the slit. Okay, so as we increase the height of the water, due to the water pressure, there will be a force on the cone. And once the vertical component of this force becomes greater than the limiting friction over here, this wedge would be raised and as a result, water would be leaked. So they're asking that particular height at which that would happen. Okay guys, so first, okay guys, so the first what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to draw the FBD of this triangular or pyramidal element of water. So now I'm gonna draw it separately. Okay, so now what are the forces uh, acting on this fluid element? So firstly, uh, there'll be clearly force because of uh, fluid present on the left side, right? That pressure, as we know, it varies with height. So one method of finding out this force is either writing pressure as a function of y and multiplying it with this small element dA and integrating it, or we can use the idea of average pressure, right? So the gauge pressure at the top is zero and the gauge, gauge pressure at the bottom is simply rho gh. So average pressure on the left side of this fluid element is going to be rho gh divided by Two. So the force on the left side is going to be the average pressure rho gh by 2 area of the left side and that is equal to the height which is h multiplied by the width of the water body which is b. So this is the force due to the fluid on the left side. Okay, So now let's write the force on the bottommost surface. So we know the pressure gauge pressure at the bottommost surface is going to be rho gh. Now simply we have to multiply it with the area. Now the width is b. So this angle over here is going to be theta uh, due to vertically opposite angles with the wedge. So this over here is going to be h tan theta. Right. So now now, uh, as we have the wooden wedge on the right side, that let's say the reaction force on the fluid element is let's say Fx, and let's say the vertical force is Fy. We also have to mark the weight of this fluid element, let's call it W. And W is simply going to be the density of the fluid, which is let's say rho times its volume. And its volume is going to be the area of this triangular element, which is half 
times base, base is going to be h tan theta times height, height is h times the width, which is b. So guys, now as, as we know the fluid element is in equilibrium, we can balance the forces on the x and y direction, which works out as following. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is draw the FBD of our wooden plank. So, okay guys, so now what are the forces on our wooden plank? The direction of fx on the fluid was towards the left, which means the direction on the plank by Newton's third law will be towards the right. And similarly, Fy, will be in the upward direction. Okay, okay. so now we have the weight of the wooden plank, which is going to be mg. And again, as the tendency of this is to go up, the friction will be in the downward direction. And we also have the normal reaction from the wall, let's call it n. Okay guys, and now in the limiting case, we know the friction force equals mu multiplied by the normal reaction. From the diagram, F is simply equal to Fy minus mg, right? And Fy itself, rho g b h square tan theta by two, and normal reaction is simply equal to fx. And after solving, we'll get the value of h as this particular value. I actually missed one point in the problem. And that is why did I ignore the atmospheric pressure, okay? The reason I ignored that is, so let's say at the top surface, Obviously, uh, they will be forced due to atmospheric pressure, right? And that is P atm times the area of the top surface. Uh, in the top surface, there will clearly be P, P atm acting, right? Everywhere. And similarly, even in the left surface as well. Let's say I, if I want the pressure uh, due to fluid at this particular point over here. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. Want the pressure at this particular point. So first, I would have to find the height from the top surface. And the pressure at this point would be equal to P naught plus rho g h. This rho g h term contribution, uh, we actually calculated. So let's just forget about that. So there will clearly be a P naught contribution, right? And that will be there at each point over here. So if you think about it, there is atmospheric pressure acting everywhere on the prism, which means the net force due to uh, the atmospheric pressures just, just adds up to zero. And that's the reason why we only look at gauge pressure when we are talking about the force in this particular case. So that's the reason why I ignored it, okay? So I hope this video helped you guys. And if you guys have any doubts, you can comment down below and if you want more such videos you can comment down below as well and yeah that was it for this video guys thanks for watching